Someone recently told me, and I want to say this to all you two, because it's been a while, that I miss you, like the deserts miss the rain, I miss you, like the deserts miss the rain, I miss you. Hello and welcome back everybody, it is good to see you again. Yes, we are back after a little bit of a hiatus, and I'm going to explain a little bit, because I was rolling for a bit, and then I just got a little bit stuck. So here's what we're going to be focusing on for this video. I'm trying to work on a leveling video, and I was just kind of confounded, like, what do I do? What do I do for a leveling video? There's so many things to do, there's so many camp spots, there's so many places to go. There's so much to see. And I was just having writer's block and editor's block. So I just finally pieced it out. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to make it fairly simple. I want to just take you all through some places that I visited leveling up. And instead of making this, here's all these camps, because that information is available. You can get where to go at level. There's there's P99 guides. There's other YouTube videos. There's all kinds of stuff. This is Cedric's, I don't remember his name, made a guide from like level 12 all the way up to 60 with Howling Stones. So what I'm going to do, what I decided how I'm going to cut this is, first of all, we're just going to hang out here in row. Bro is just a good place. If you're ever by the tunnel, stop by here. There are skeleton ships galore, which will go to the first best place to farm bone chips. But here's how I'm going to lay this video out. I decided I'm going to take you all through some early leveling tips that will help set you up through now to the end game. I'm going to show you some nice bag tricks to help reduce your weight, carry more loot, which should help help you in your journeys if you're going to far away lands, which I will be taking you to. And then for this first video, I'm not going to go too crazy. I'm just going to focus on some nice teens to level 20 get you up into 30 camps to focus on. I'm going to stop by the tunnel to review a couple items that I suggest that everybody get as soon as they can, if you can save up for them. And then there's going to be a spot in Befallen that I would recommend you see around level 24. And then after that, I'm going to, I'm just going to kind of, I'm going to keep it veiled for right now for what spots I go to level, but that's going to be a, a little bit an overview and this is going to be a little bit of a series. So once I get into the early 30s, I'm going to show you some 30s camps. At that point, your charm will become a little bit more efficient. There's a good one, two places you can level up 20 to 30 easily, which I'll show you those spots. And then once I get into level 40, I've got... There's so many different places you can go. There's so many things to do at level 40. You should have set yourself up. I'm going to go through a few cash camps so that way you can hopefully save up some money to get a few upgrades and help get some so pot so that way traveling isn't so hindersome. I don't know if that's a word. It doesn't it's not it's not so hindering to travel. And 40, we're just going to go see some great some great campsites, some we're going to do some dungeon crawling. Now you may say, that may seem kind of lame on a 60 Necromancer, but I've got a, I've got a surprise for you. I've got a surprise for you. And instead of revealing it right now, I'm going to transition to my first spot, which is what I recommend for you as far as the best place to gather bone chips, as well as the best place to level 10 to 20. This zone is a mainstay. 
for anybody, and I'd highly recommend it. So I'm going to transition over, and thank you all for watching again. There will be chapters noted below, so if you want to skip to certain levels or just see what's going on, please use the chapters. So let's go to our first camp. In that camp, of course, is Kern's Tower. Levels 12 to 20, you can go all the way up to 24 in the basement. It is the place to level early on, if you can get out here. This is in Field of Bones, so you'll see a lot of Ixars here, obviously. But if you're prepared and bring some FC bag slots to get all kinds of bone chips, you can fill up pretty well. Bring your spells so you don't have to go back and forth. This is the place to level all the way up to 24. The Zem is about 200%. Mostly you're going to be facing undead in here. There's really no social aggro on Project 1999 anyway. You get a ton of bone chips, enough to probably last you to your 50s if you bring some empty backpacks to fill up. And the coin drop is fairly gracious as well. You get anywhere from a few gold to I think I've seen the highest is one platinum on the higher level mobs. So it really adds up. That is a caution. Be prepared to destroy your copper and don't feel bad about it. There aren't a ton of risks here. The only risks are there's fairly densely populated areas. Of course, no social aggro, but if you get body aggro, you or your pet, you're going to end up getting a lot. There's Baroni here. They start out typically dubious to most races, if not all races. So the first Bernie kill you get, you're going to go down to threateningly. So if you keep that faction, you can go into the basement. And then, of course, this is just a difficult place to get to for non-Ixars. I will have one suggestion after this, though. What you're going to do here is the standard method of... I'm fighting here. I took out all my high level spells and I'm just using low level spells is basically just pet tanking, uh, tap tanking. You want to start on the scale bones and focus on the scale bones. Those are eight, nine level, eight, nine, 10. The graders are a little bit higher in the low tens. This whole bottom floor, you could probably get to level what 14 or 15 here. Then you can start to go up to the top up the tower. I think there's four levels in the tower total, but the basement, or excuse me, the first floor can keep you quite a while. Varying difficulty, higher scaling as you go up to the second, to the third, to the fourth floor. Alternately, you can go into the basement. The basement is where the really high levels, the teens, I don't think there's anything level 20 down there, but if you want to just make a run through the basement, the respawn timer here is about 18 minutes. So you can do a run through the basement, get all the high level mobs. And that's where folks will typically get to level 24. So it's a little bit daunting because most everything grays out or excuse me, greens out in your early twenties. But if you, pace it out you can stay here easily to level 24 get a bun bunch of bone chips get some gold and some quick levels but let's go to our next spot we are zoning into befallen befallen would be your alternate place to level this will get you yeah i mean you could start here at like level four or five but seven you can get in the 20s again just like kerns you can get in 24 25 in the basement I'm going to go straight to the basement and I'm here on my paladin um, because I don't have anything. I, I just, this was the best for me. This is the best way to get down here. So you're obviously not going to see how a Necro would do it. So forgive me for that. The rewards here in Befallen are quite gracious and quite incredible for the level. There's a great Zem, not as good as Kern's. You still do get a good amount of bone chips. There are bronze weapon, Damask armor. Random vendor items for like research spells you get. So you can end up, if you come down here repeatedly, you can make some pretty good money to save up for some jewelry, some bracelets and such. The way I take down, you want to just jump down to this basement. These are the higher level areas. So this is 
probably 16 plus to get down here. There are quite a few more risks in the basement of Buffalon specifically or anywhere in Buffalon. I just like coming down to the basement after my teens. But you get necromancers, casters, which ultimately they will summon a pet. There's quite a few ads here you get because there is some sense of social aggro in a lot of mobs packed densely together. Uh, key progression, there's locked doors that you need to get keys for eventually to get down here. So if you come down to this little well, you're not indefinitely stuck down here, but you're going to have to find the key. Which that can make difficulty if you don't have the keys. I think one's even... No rent. It can make, make it difficult to escape here. You obviously can gate. And it also makes corpse recovery a little bit difficult so heed those warnings if you plan to come down here i came down here specifically for one item that is off the talmaturgist which is just in this little cove again and i want to show it off too because i came down here specifically for this item but i forgot how many platinum drops you get down here and just how good the experience is so if you get tired of currents at level 20 you can come down here there are quite a few greens, but the platinum to experience is is really good. Now, don't do what I did and just face check and pull <laughs> those because the Talmaturgus is a level 19 or 20 necromancer with a strong pet. I think it can root, undead root the pet with hungry earth. Uh, there's two other spawns in the room. I recommend being level 24 or bring a friend unless you are very well versed in being able to I think you've just got rest of the dead at this point 24 you'll have the um, better undead lull but you're you're we're gonna want a lull but there's not always undead in there sometimes she can have two necromancers accompanying her so that could be really difficult um, my paladins level 17 and twinked <laughs> twinked in the max as you can imagine so I was able to pull this off, but if you're not twinked, you're going to want to proceed with some caution here and pull very, very carefully here. But if you come down, if you're patient at level 24, you can get a really nice dagger, which is, I'll show it here, it's the Dagger of Marnik. When I came on Sarleon, that dagger lasted me until my level 50s. It is a primary and or range slot. Hopefully you can see it well. Plus 3 intelligence and 15 mana. Plus 15 mana at this low of a level is incredible because the intelligence modifiers don't really take off till later. That and it is a minor light source too. So there's a lot of cool reasons to have it. To have your first light source when you're venturing out can be very advantageous, especially if you're a human, if you're a gnome it really helps, or anything else. So I highly recommend suggest getting that item and over here here's the shadow knight if you need to get out once you get a troll shadow knight he's in the cove a little bit so it's just it's just straight across from the talmaturgist he'll drop all the keys you need to get out of here so it's not um, a loss you're not stuck down here although it can take about three or four placeholders and with the zone being about a 20 minute uh, respawn it can pose some problems and that was Parkalgani, my paladin, who I just recently twinked. And here's the big reveal. Um, we're in Kithagor on my Necromancer aneurysm. I get it. It's a tacky name. I thought big brain, brain bleeds. It's not the most flattering name. Um, I've gotten a couple comments on it. But we are actually here not to level, but more importantly... To get some good bags that are going to last you your entire adventure up until you get into your 50s. These, of course, are Shralok packs. I'm not sure if you all have heard, but I highly recommend getting six, seven, even eight of these. They're a backpack specifically I use to reduce weight. They are an eight slot giant. You can store giant items in it and it's 20% weight reduction. So for instance, let's take if you've got six regular backpacks six times three that's 18 and you replace them with six shralic packs not only can you store 
giant items, not only do you get 20% weight reduction, but your total weight, you're going to keep it down. Um, so six Shralock packs will be six times 0.4, uh, 2.4. So that's 2.4 weight in backpacks versus, what, 18? So you're saving yourself 15.6 weight. 15.6 weight you can use to carry two long swords to go sell. So it'll take you a long way as well as whatever weight that you're reducing. This camp is, it's kind of fairly camp, but you don't get a, I don't ever see a huge list often. So you saw when we traveled down from the West Commons land, I just went straight south and then I went west. There'll be a little lake that you'll see right there. It'll be around this area. That's, it's about where the X is. Now, it can be a little tricky your first time out here. Just remember the lake. I'll show you a little landmark that'll help the ease of it to be able to find this fairly easy. This The spawn is static, so I've never seen it wandering. It just sits there. So basically what you do is you come across on the south side of the lake. I'll run towards the lake here. Um, Elizabeth is camping the spike. So I just asked, hey, mind if I get this camp? Holler at me when you're finished up here. Um, but what you'll do is, you see that little lake? You'll come down all across the lake on the south side and then go all the way west until you see that little bow area or that little, um, I don't even know what you call it. Um, and you'll look at the polygons here. It's almost a straight line up this hill. And that'll go to the south wall, and then you'll see the spawn just to your right there as you're running up these polygons, the little divide there um, separating the two different inclines. <laughs> Reminds me of uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon doing landscaping in that. I love that game. Back when I was younger, doing all the landscaping, you had to figure out the um, different inclines and everything there. But yeah, sooner or later, you'll either pop in, find this camp open, or you'll talk to the person who's got the camp and you'll get it passed. At most, I typically spend probably about four or five, six hours here doing a, it's just a little six minute, 40 second AFK camp. Again, Recfec Shralock, I think I said it right, Recfec Shralock has a 100% chance to drop the bag. So as long as you see... This this mob spawn, you're you're guaranteed a bag. It can vary how lucky you are. I've seen three of wreck fat or uh, <laughs> wreck neck in a row. I've seen three of them in a row. I've also seen spans of thirteen placeholders where I haven't seen one, and then it turns over. So you know it gauge your expectations appropriately, but. Again, you sit here and do this camp, it's going to it's going to pay off in dividends later. <clears throat> you'll you'll be able to adventure to your heart's content for you know, 16 more stone. That's more weight you have to play around with. As a caster, you don't get a ton of strength, so that's why weight management is as important, not not as important as monks. But still very important. Even monks, they'll buy these bags. So if you don't need them, this is a good place to start a start to get some platinum for some jewelry. I'm going to make some jewelry recommendations here in a minute to help you out or some uh, soap pots. But we're done with our camp. I think I got four. Didn't I wasn't going to sit here all day. Four is plenty enough. Okay, I got three. <laughs> three, not four. Five. Three, sir. Three. Look at that. Huge comparison. Even you get a bear skin potion bag that are 10 item, they're still 2.5. So I, I just can't recommend enough to get some Shralock packs to help you out. It's That way you can save more money for coin and... You don't have to inconvenience yourself because banks sometimes are going to be a long ways for some of the camps I recommend. So this is pivotally important. So 
yeah, do this camp. If you all don't recognize the spot, we are right outside of Gook in Inul Thule Swamp. If you want to just check the map at the right and the location, that's where we're going to be headed to. We're going to be doing a quest called the Emissary. And what we're after here is the Forager Bag, which is a 10 slot, 50% weight reduction bag. You can get in an Agat quest without having to have faction with the Shaman Guild, with the Ogres over in Agak. Then we got a dirty little frog lock trying to impede our progress. Nevertheless, did he know he met an untimely death and I will use that scythe. Oh yes, I will wield that scythe with my pet. Just to show we are the frog lock slayers. Anyway, we're going to be taking down this troll. Um, I think it's called Slayer Captain is his name. You'll see how it goes. We need to get a couple frog eye. There he is. Slayer Captain. He wanders a little bit, but he can be spa found spawned around the same area. He's a little bit of an undercon for the level that he is. He's level 15, but he hits up to like, I think, 40 or something. There you go. I didn't get experience at 24. So, Frog Eye Necklace. Now there's two diverging quests and there's two different frog eye necklaces. So make sure you're taking down the correct mob. Worst comes worst, you can always identify it. There's the information up there on the screen though. Um, level, I think it spawns in a range. Some of them I got experience, some of them I didn't. So I would guess probably level 15, 16 um, quest. Yeah, he's not, I mean, you got a pet, he's not too hard, just burn down with shock and poison. <clears throat> Typically what I do here is I stay until I got four frog eye necklaces, because there could be, there's a few different items in the rotation. Sometimes it only takes me one or two, sometimes it takes me four, but it's never taken me more than that to get the forager bag. We got three now, and took them down again. All right, there's our fourth frog eye necklace, if I can get it looted. <laughs> so I'll show you how to complete this quest. First of all, I'll meet you all in Agak, where this quest both begins and ends, and show you how I did it. Now, I've got a level 60 enchanter. So what I did is I ogre illusioned, and then I used collaboration on Marta. From what I've experienced on the wiki, it reads that you need a level 5 shaman to get the emissary or that next part of the quest to spawn. I don't know if that's true. I think you have to do the preceding quest line to get a little bit of experience because it's the only way to get experience with the shaman guild in the ogre town. And I think it was supposed to be a progression quest. So... Worst comes worst, you can always collect some some extra frog eye necklaces and see if there's any ogre shamans that you know that can help you with the quest later on. Just say, hey, I'll share some frog eye necklaces with you, get this cool bag. So that's another option. Or Enchanter, of course, that hasn't ruined their faction here. But once you get the em Emissary spawn, obviously you could just switch over to your other tune that's here. So be parked at the entrance. Where the Emissary spawns, I'll give you a... So here's the entrance here. You go up over this little hill. And then there's the guard station. It actually... The Emissary... I think it's Glib... If I remember right, yeah, right up there if you see where it's flashing. Right by Bouncer Scon. Which, fear not, don't worry, that little flippin' baddie will just start waddling, jumping his way down here. Yeah, we'll just speed this part up. 
Sometimes it'll take a while for the little frog lock to get here. They're always in a hurry to inconvenience our day, but when we actually need a frog lock to do something, they're just kind of on their own time. So be it. There it is. There he is, Emissary Glib. Yep, he's just strutting along. Hello there. So what you do is one at a time, you'll give give him this little frog lock eye necklace. And within a couple, I got the forager bag. <clears throat> there it is right there. So weight one, 10 capacity, 50% weight reduction, size medium. So this isn't gonna carry as large as item as a Shraylock pack, but it will help reduce significantly your weight as well as only being weight one. Hey, that's a lot less than pretty much every every other item to, or bag rather, every other bag that you're gonna be able to get. Every other, every other carrying container that is. I know we haven't, this is a leveling guide. We haven't gotten to any leveling, but Please hear me a minute. All this stuff is important for leveling and getting specifically a good start. If you're just out there to try to level and blaze, blaze the trail, so to speak, um, my leveling series will probably get better in the 30s and 40s. I'll show just a lot of camps. 30s, I'll probably showcase the entire 30s. 40s, I'm going to break it up into individual camps or zone because there's a lot of fun stuff to do there. But I wanted to take a minute to talk about some ways to make money early on, some items to look out for early. Hopefully you've sold some bags, you've been down in Befallen to get some money. Hopefully you got a few hundred platinum by now if you've been shell selling, shelling, selling Shrelock packs and you got a few hundred plat, I would highly suggest looking for a couple items in EC or trying to buy some items. Of those items, the first I would suggest are two pieces of jewelry, a golden jaded bracelet, as well as a golden fire weathering, or rather a set of both of these. I got a set of the upgraded golden fire, which is platinum fire wedding ring and golden jaded bracelet. It was just shy of 500 platinum for the set of platinum and golden jaded bracer. So that's two bracers, two rings. This set should cost you. The bracers here run about 35 platinum per. They might run 50 per. So that'd be 100 PP for a set of bracelets. The wedding ring should be around 200. So they're not too expensive, maybe even lower, maybe even a hundred. Oh yeah, yeah, I just checked the wiki there, they're a hundred. So yeah, for 300 plat, you should be able to get two 45 HP rings and two golden jaded bracers, which that's an increase of 30 HP, 30 mana for the bracelets as well as 90 from the rings. So that's a pretty significant stat boost. Having some extra HP early on will take you a long way. You get Feign Death at 16, so you get that get out of jail free card as long as you've got some HP. Because the next place I'm going, the, the enemies start to hit a bit harder in the 40s and 50s. You get two mobs on you hitting for 50, 50, 50, your HP goes down quick so i'd highly recommend having that jewelry and maybe some just cheap slots here and there a cheap robe look out for but raw intelligence doesn't really take off until the late 30s 40s anyhow and then following that of course if you can get them a 10 dose blood of wolf we've got blue and green or full services now so these are available for 100 pp each 10 charges uh, you can recharge them early on. It might be easier just to buy new potions. But I'd highly recommend, especially the camp I'm going to next, having a at least a couple jars of these just to make life easier and easier for traveling. But if you can't get them, it's not a huge deal. 
Also want to talk a little bit about dumpster diving and how I've made some early platinum when I first started out. This is really off the cuff. It may be it may be well known to veterans, but to people starting out, I'd, I'd highly consider dumpster diving. Around the commons area, there's multiple merchants as long as you can access those merchants and you're above dubious. A lot of people, I find some sellers just get impatient with items and they just flip them to a merchant. So you check the merchants here in East Commons and sometimes you'll find valuable items that you can turn around and um, barter or sell with people in the common lands. To help provide you an example, I found a crushed flame emerald. You'll see some of these quest gems. I'd highly recommend familiarizing yourself and just going through the vendors. I knew these and I've seen them. These are worth about 500 plat. I bought it from a vendor for 50 plat. I then obviously turned it and turned a profit of 400 platinum. I sold it for 450 plat. So I'd highly recommend just going through being very slow and um, very particular, well, not particular, but being meticulous about going through the vendor sometimes. You'll find some hidden treasures like these where you can turn it and flip a quick profit. With that 400 platinum, I was able to buy, buy excuse me, I was able to buy, I'm getting ahead of myself. I was able to buy four 10 dose Spirit of Wolf potion. So when I first started, I used to buy giant scale mail items. These were when Kale was maybe one or two years out. But by buying them, they were low cost, 5, 10 plat. I don't remember what they were, but I'd sell them for significantly more than that because they were still upgrades to certain characters. I made a good 100, 200 plat in my first teens this was on this character when i first started out this is actually my first project 1999 character and i made a good two three hundred plat just by continuing to go through and dumps what i call dumpster diving in the east common vendors probably not going to be able to do it if you're xr but if you are a race just check it if you see an item that is interesting or it looks like it could be valuable. Take some time. Just refer to the wiki. Have pull up the wiki and see what the average buying price is um, the last 30 days. So I've had one or two duds, but for the most part, if you're patient, you can um, use the East Common Tunnel to your advantage. You can also people set, see, excuse me, see people selling items, and if you uh, if you are here enough and patient you can sometimes find sellers just trying to get out of something quick and you can turn around and sell that for a profit too so get to know items get to know the uh, general selling prices for those items now that we're all wrapped up with the east commons tunnel and Finishing our bags. Let's go out and do what we intended to do. Adventure and get some levels. Get some quick levels here in high keep nonetheless. The first spot I'm going to recommend is this. What's her name? Um, Lislia Goldtune. Now, this might be hard if you're KOS two guards, which I think Ixars naturally are. This is going to be more geared towards, you know, gnomes, erudite, erudites, and humans, those who aren't innately KOS in high keep. Lislia is on a, I don't know, 20, 21 minute, 24 minute timer. And she's not social to the bar, to the, excuse me, she's not, she's a bard that's not social to guards. She is, I think, level 24, 25. She's level 25, though. But you can still take her down fairly easily with fear kiting. Just do some aggro kiting. Try to get a fear off. She does punch quite, um, quite vigorously. I'm going to throw a heat blood on.
Level 24, it's kind of tough. I'll show you some tricks later. But you want to be making sure that you're out damaging your pet, getting 51% of the damage. Otherwise, you're going to lose half the experience. So 24 to 29, I focus on using Shaka Poison until I visibly know I've done about 40% of the damage. My dots will then for sure tick 10% or a little bit more. And I also use, I've got a dagger that does quite a bit of damage to help out too. So be particularly aware of that when you're leveling, especially in your early levels, because your dots aren't efficient. They don't tick quite as vigorously as, as far as damage is concerned. Where we're going to head next is we're going to head down to a little dude named Osargon. So if you want to maintain your faction with the Freeport guards and the High Keep guards, well, not the Freeport guards, but the High Keep guards here, there's a mob named Osar, I think it's Osargon or Osagrin down below. I'll show you how to get there. He's great experience, 25, level 25 plus, as well as the zone modifier here is, it's, it's out of the ballpark. It's off the charts. It's 200% or is it 166? They nerfed it. I think it's 166 now. So you'll follow this path and we're going to be heading to the jail. Take a right here. And all the guards are dubious, so if I take one or two hits, I'm basically down to threatening. <clears throat> yeah, Osagri Osargon, we'll call him Osargon. Osargon starts apprehensively here, and there are no bad faction hits other than some obscure, some obscure, um, faction and you get positive faction to the knights of truth as well which will help you bank in free board so we're kind of a, in essence taking care of two things at once getting faction with north freeport and getting some experience here um so he o osargon won't lower any good factions inside high keep that you need to get around here he's got low hp he hits hard though so, but six minute, 40 second, you could just sit here at AFK camp, get three, three to 4% experience to tick. Obviously like to circle in some guards. I would, if you're an Ixar anyway, it's great, great experience. So transitioning, you can stay in high keep probably to 50 if you really wanted to. So that zone, it's an anomaly. You can stay there forever and just... <laughs> Level off of guards and goblins. Goblins will take you to 35. I'm going to instead opt to go to probably one of my favorite camps at this level. Level 25 to 35. You can start here at 24. But that, of course, is Ocean of Tears, the sisters camp. In this camp... The good thing is the bad thing about it is it's way out of the way. You might say what's good or what's bad about that. Well, you're not on average going to have people stopping by and just claiming the camp. Pretty well, you can come here, jump on at an odd time of the day, and just find the camp open for yourself. Once you get proficient at splitting, it's no problem. you got two... You got two EXP mobs on a six minute timer and it's Ocean Tears is six minute timer, not 640. So makes it even quicker and even better. Then you got a merchant just right next door. So as long as you're of faction, you're good. All right, here we've got the sisters camp. Here's what we're going to do. They are the two that we want spawn outside this hut. So you've got Larissa, which is dark blue to level 26. And Asania, which is dark blue as well. I think Larissa is 24 and 
Uh, Sonia is 25. So here's how you're going to split this camp. This is totally doable. I did it at 24. It's a little bit tougher. But we're going to try to snare Larissa. I'm going to run back a little bit. Feign death. Okay. This is just a standard snare split. So nothing new here. We're going to wait for Asanya to path back. Now this is the patient and sure fire away to get this camp split. As long as you hit darkness. If you're 24, there's a chance that your darkness could be resisted. Okay, looks like she reset. Come there. I'm going to hit with the heat blood. I'm going to hit with another darkness. Now I have pet taunt offer this usually okay come on I'm trying to get egg there we go I'm trying to get aggro so that way Larissa will follow me and then oh. okay we're gonna pet back yeah we're just splitting so don't expect this first part to go perfect Pets guarded. That's all right. Ah. <laughs> they, she likes to resist. When I need it to land the most, and they'll flee at 20%, so as long as you got snare on, that's good. Just make sure not to let them walk around too much, because if you do, they will aggro others. Other sisters on the island, there's quite a few of them. There's quite a few sisters you can do on this island, actually. And then Asanya, we are still apprehensive, so we're going to bring our pet, sit down. We're going to meta up. Oh, I got my, got to get my allure of death on. We will meta up. Basically, we want to be close to 100% as possible. So the less proficient you are in this camp, the longer you're going to wait. The spawn timer here is six minutes. So in other words, if you take one down, you're going to basically essentially wait five to five and a half minutes to make sure you're all met it up. You got your HP, you got your MP up, and then five and a half minutes, you're going to pull uh, Asanya. So that'll give you about a five, five and a half window between each target. The better you are, the more proficient you become at this camp, you're going to want to get those respawn timers as close together as possible so that way it's about three minutes and then the next one spawns about three minutes that way you've got two spawns you're taking down in six minutes keep the experience flowing in and you're going to maximize your drops as well so that's what i suggest five five and a half minutes waiting before taking the other sister to start to get proficient when you when you're meted up to 100 percent you got your hp good then you're going to want to pull the next sister max you can do is about three minutes so i'll show you how we're going to pull asanya now that they're broken you're going to need to get pretty close now i'm not kos yet but if you get this close you're probably going to get her um aggro but since we're not, we're not going to worry about it. Normally, probably send a pet and back it off. But darkness, I'm going to run up this hill kind of by this tree here. I'm going to throw on a heat blood. Pet attack. And then run over to this little tree on the hill. And then fear. That should send her fearing and running downwards. As long as you don't get a resist. Now, I'm choosing to use shock poison here. It is, it does a... It's 20 more mana, but it does about the same as a full duration heart flutter. So I don't feel that, I don't think heart flutter even gets its max duration of 10 ticks doing this. It's, it's really tough to tell. So I can just hit another poison bolt when she's running back. She'll turn around and flee. And I'm going to stab her a couple times, get some extra damage. 
All right. And yeah, unfortunately, my pet's not high enough to use. And then there's our long sword. Pet's not high enough that it can force dual wield, and I didn't want to sit and try and try again. But that is the sister hut camp, so we'll wait for the next sister. Again, we snare, run up, and of course, I get spirit of wolf. Come up, heat blood, send pet, and then run over here, fear. She should run down. Ah, the boat. I love the ocean. All is well that ends well. This ended pretty well, I'd have to say. All right. Well, we are going to ride into the dusk and head back to Akanon. I hit 29. So I'm going to go ahead and get my new spells. You can jam out here for quite a while. You can get to level 35, 36 out here. Um, but this is going to do it for this video. So I wanted to thank you all for coming and viewing this. Again, I didn't hit every camp that I thought was viable. I just hit my favorites. I really wanted to hit and bring forward some information about bags because weight management is so important in traveling. And I think that's more important than what camp should you go to at this level. Because there's so much you can see in EverQuest. Find your own camps. Look at the guides and kind of decide some areas that you've never been to before. Go adventure. Or just follow my preferred path for leveling. But we'll be back next time for levels 30 plus. Hope to see you then. Have a good day.